Well, I'll do the intro. Um, okay, next up, we're going to have um, Jean Frederick was going to be talking to us about um, Kubernetes on Victory Raspberry Pi. Okay, so um, it's, it's something to, to, to be a kind of educating, fun, and try to motivate you to try the same experience. Um, there's a demo. Um, I have a bunch of Raspberry, which are going to make some light at some point. Uh, they, it's to tell me that I have to start the demo uh, because basically this is going to build a network. And, and I'm going to this. This is basically to. Uh, it is the O2 of a Tomcat demo I've been doing at some Apache Con, explaining uh, how we can uh, do uh, uh, session sharing uh, using uh, the Kubernetes cloud uh, in Tomcat. So um, I'm Jean-Frédéric Clair. I'm working for Red Hat. Uh, you can uh, find me uh, on the, this email uh, nearly everywhere on on, on Twitter uh, on SlideShare. Uh, the slides are already available on SlideShare, so uh, if you don't see uh, the small things and you see it better on your laptop, you can just uh, go there. So um, here I have my uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, cloud made of raspberries. Um, Basically, um, I have uh, one box uh, here, uh, which is going to provide uh, a Wi-Fi to the others. Uh, and uh, I have a, a master running here, and two nodes, which uh, at some point should make some light. Actually, both of them are making some light. So uh, these have created a network uh, on which I have to connect to start the demo, which, of course, is going to take a while to start. So. Um, I have to, that's the first thing when you, you show how to do a demo, usually the first thing you screw is like, uh, what, you don't have network or something like that. So uh, this demo is basically to, uh, to show you that you can easily have a Kubernetes uh, running uh, so that you can use it uh, with some space, with very little space. Uh, you can have an offline demo uh, of uh, uh, your application that you have prepared for Kubernetes. So at some point, I should get the network, <coughs> hopefully. Uh, it's trying to connect to the first and it failed miserably. OK, I need a few seconds. OK. So I'm, I'm connecting on this box, and I'm going to uh, uh, tell master uh, to, to start the master and to start the two nodes. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting it, and then I will explain how it, do, how it goes, because it, it requires some time to, to start. Ah. So it's going to ping the node, and then it's going to start the stuff. So I'll go back to the uh, presentation while it's starting. Um, so, um, what what I'm doing here is basically I've taken it a bit uh, the hard way. Um, I'm using a, a Fedora distribution uh, on Raspberry 4. Uh, the Raspberry 4 doesn't, is not yet uh, supported by the Linux kernel, uh, I mean the base kernel, so you have to use the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, specific fork of the Linux kernel. Uh, it needs to be cross-compiled, so you can, it's, it's quite easy. On the laptop, uh, you have to install the uh, ARM64 uh, cross-compilation tool and, and build your kernel. Uh, you have to build it for a Raspberry 4, and you have also to add some stuff uh, that uh, Fedora is requiring, uh, like uh, to have the thing working for S Linux, and you have some parameters also to set uh, uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, this is in, you can find it in the, in my, uh, URL, on the, my URL there, but there's um, not so much stuff there. So to build, um, you just uh, tell that you want to build this config. You, uh, that's it, building the configuration files. And then uh, you make make image modules, and, and, uh, and then you will have uh, the kernel and the modules and some, some other file you need. Uh, then you need to prepare SD card, uh, basically, uh, it's easy. I have <laughs> Raspberry Pi SD card there where I have installed the stuff. And I can normally show what is inside. You will see. 
So uh, uh, this is, it's a bit small, uh, but it's readable, no? Okay, so basically uh, this, is, uh, this is my, uh, my car, this is the, uh, the boot, this is a, a, a DOS or a FAT uh, that is going to be read by the, uh, uh, by the bootstrap uh, of the Raspberry. The bootstrap of the Raspberry is done by the uh, uh, graphic card or the boardcom card which is going to read this, uh, load the kernel uh, in memory and uh, tell the kernel that it needs to, to run on ARM64 version. And then, and then start it up, which is uh, what is uh, what has been done. And um, uh, you have the uh, the root partition uh, of the Raspberry. I have used very big uh, card because uh, I also want to run OpenShift on it. And it's uh, it's I was you can do it with us uh, 32 without problems. And you probably could use a smaller ones, but the smaller SD card are, that doesn't worth it. So back to the presentation. So you have seen the starting is running in background. Um, the first, the next problem I have is like basically um, I have to set up the the Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, to do this, uh, you have you have two ways. You can either copy the file at the right place uh, in the Raspberry Pi. It's it's doable. It, well, it's easy. Uh, I I'm not going to explain it because uh, I've done it the other way. Uh, which is basically um, just connecting my Raspberry Pi uh, to my uh, router at home, uh, and, and I make a nmap, uh, find out that it's a Raspberry. Uh, I have uh, previously uh, copied to it uh, the Raspberry is starting SSH and add my keys on it, so basically I just have to SSH to it as root and then install what is needed. So basically I'm going to get the configuration for the Raspberry 4, uh, I'm going then to install some tools uh, to do, and then I'm going to configure the Wi-Fi. Uh, Fedora 31 has uh, some funny uh, kernel feature, uh, which is uh, MAC address randomization. So uh, uh, then I have to edit the file and say never, because otherwise I have some problem to find my Raspberry. <laughs> um, the uh, description of what is running there, what is running on the infra, uh, if you look, you will find a Raspberry Pi network here. Uh, Raspberry Tree, I guess. Uh, you can guess the password easily from uh, my Facebook uh, friends and information. Uh, it, and uh, in, in my other demo, I'll uh, let everyone connect to it to play with it, but we, don't, we won't have time for that. Um, so the, the explanation of how to set up this box uh, is um, on, on my blog. Uh, you can have a look to it. Uh, um, I can show more stuff on it uh, after the presentation, like open it and show you what uh, you need inside, uh, because basically uh, it's, it's going to, make, to run Kubernetes without uh, an internet connection, so I'm, I need a re real-time clock, I need a, a DHCP and DNS to have all those things running. So all, all this is explained on, in my blog if you want to try it. Uh, just go there and have fun. The next problem I had is like, of course, I need to, to build uh, uh, ARM64 uh, images. Uh, uh, the cool thing is like uh, ARM64 images, there's a lot that are available. Uh, I have tried it with uh, CentOS uh, 7 and uh, the um, uh, uh, Alpine um, kernel. The Alpine kernel, the Alpine Linux is good because it's quite small. Uh, basically, what I did is like, uh, I use this Raspberry and, and, and install <coughs> Docker on it and Java, Maven. Uh, I'm doing Tomcat stuff, I, it's obvious. Uh, so basically, um, I've, uh, I have built uh, these things. Uh, a small note, uh, like um, I was doing the same on my laptop to make sure that I understand everything. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, basically, uh, you need to, to take care of multi-platform if you want to use the same image name. Otherwise, the first time you start the stuff on the Raspberry, it's going to tell you like it's a wrong image. So you must make sure uh, uh, you have the right to use the manifest tool uh, in order that uh, Docker is able uh, to put it in the, um, in the Docker up the right information. So basically, you have the information that uh, this image is uh, for ARM, this image is for uh, uh, S390, this image is uh, for uh, ARM64, and so on. So basically, it is this. I won't jump into detail. Uh, you use the Docker build. Uh, you tell him which arch you are, and then the important thing is in this file that you have done on the back, the, demo, the, the Tomcat demo, the uh, YAML file. 
Uh, on the master, you have to, so this is basically what, was, what is running in background. Um, you, you have basically, uh, I've run this demo several times, so I have to clean it. I have to play a little with the EP table. Uh, I have to remove the swap because otherwise QB admin does not want to start. Uh, and then uh, I, I need a Kubernetes network. I have to choose a wave to do that. You, you have a lot of others, but this was the, this is the first one I tried and uh, it worked, so I stay on this one. Uh, I'm open to suggestion. I can do tries. It's very easy. Like it's, it's my own, it's my own Kubernetes, so I can do what I want. We can try, I can try other stuff. And so basically, then I'm going to uh, do whatever you would do if you use uh, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, I will basically copy the configuration to my local configuration, so I can run on. Uh, uh, this guy, but I can have do, done that on my laptop. I can run the command on the Kubernetes things. So basically, uh, to install the network is going to uh, something like a kubectl uh, apply uh, minus f and the name of the uh, of the file. Um, um, I have a local copy of the uh, of the of the of the plugin uh, in my repository, but uh, it's just uh, vget from the uh, original one. On each node, uh, well, you have to do a kind of same thing. Uh, you're just going to join uh, your Kubernetes cluster. Basically, you have a command to do that. Uh, you just uh, QB admin uh, cluster uh, token create. It's uh, going to uh, give you uh, the token. And if you say it, uh, print on command, it will just basically tell you which command you have to run on the node uh, to to make this node join your Kubernetes cluster. And once, it, once everything is done, you, you can make a kubectl get node to see the your nodes that are running. We are going to try it. So here, kubectl get nodes. And you see, um, I have the nodes running. Uh, green is obviously the one which is displaying in green. The blue is the one displaying in, in a <coughs> In uh, <coughs> the blue is the one displaying in blue, and master is this one which is hidden there with have no color. So it had been started uh, while we were explaining the stuff. So, so I have my I have my Kubernetes running. Uh, let's try to have some fun there. <laughs> so. So the next one I want to do uh, is basically uh, move from a Tomcat cluster uh, to a Kubernetes uh, cluster of Tomcats. So basically, I have one problem. I'm going. To, I'm jumping uh, quite fast. I hope it, uh, everyone knows what uh, is web and uh, HTTP. So basically, I have one problem. Uh, the protocol does not have a, the HTTP 1.1 does not have a, a transaction as a, a persistent connection. So basically, you need a cookie to carry this information. And if you are in a cluster, uh, basically you're going to create a cookie and you're going to store uh, the information of the user uh, <coughs> on the server and you associate it uh, with uh, uh, one cookie. In this case, it's the session ID. So basically, uh, I, what I'm going to need is like basically I need to replicate the session information between the, 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 the two nodes here because, of course, I can't, I can't, I can't be sure on which Tomcat the, in the things are going to, to arrive. So uh, this is the uh, things. So how the Tomcat cluster is working, it uses multicast. Uh, we don't have multicast uh, in Kubernetes for the moment. Uh, so basically, uh, you have to wait. You have to I have this guy has to discover this guy. So uh, you can use the Kubernetes API to do that. This is very easy. Uh, it, it's, it's the internal thing. It's like a, this is a, like you make a get. Uh, well, you need to it's a, you need to be encrypted and all that stuff. But this is a decrypted version of it. Uh, the date is wrong because uh, basically it was a try without the uh, the clock working. Uh, and you can see that it's going to tell some information like um, where it's running. Uh, um, especially what I want to know is the pod the pod IP, which is the the IP inside the Kubernetes network. So basically, that with this, I'm, I'm going to be um, able to find uh, from this guy where is this guy at which IP it is. So I can I can exchange the session information. So when I will run my small uh, application on my HTTPD, I will basically be able to to arrive on the right Tomcat 
and uh, on one Tomcat, but I will have the right uh, session information on both. So basically, I don't care on which one I'm arriving because I've been exchanging the session information. Uh, QBPing is a, is a bit tricky because you need some permissions. So in this case, it's not a big problem. But if you're running a real uh, on a real cloud, you won't have those permissions. Uh, you will not ask your administrator so that he give it to you. So there's another way uh, to discover the, na the other node. It's uh, just uh, uh, basically uh, we name it uh, QBPing. You can look for it. Uh, it had been invented by the uh, Infinispan guys. So basically, uh, here you just make a, a, a NS lookup. So basically, well, this is a uh, this is an OpenShift example. Uh, it works the same way. Uh, well, the command is a bit different. Uh, so basically, you make an NS lookup uh, on your namespace, and then you're going to find the Tomcat. This is the way the, this guy is going to discover this guy, and this guy is going to discover this guy. So in the in my demo, in the next page, I'm going to uh, to see. I'm going to I have uh, HTTPD running here. Uh, this HTTPD uh, is going to be able to find uh, the different uh, load balancer uh, in, uh, uh, in I, I, I need to start the demo, otherwise I will run out of time. I will run out of time now. Okay. So. So here, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm in my Kubernetes uh, uh, cloud, and I'm, I'm, I'm starting uh, my pods. Um, and I, you can see, basically, uh, what it had do. It create a namespace, put it set on its, its namespace. Uh, then it, it start, uh, it start the Tomcat uh, pods, uh, and uh, create a different service. It create one service, which is a DNS service, so that uh, the NS lookup uh, will work on both of these. And um, <coughs> then I have the two Tomcat which are starting, which at some, po some point are going to be up, hopefully. So one is running, the other is not yet ready. OK, at some point they're going to be ready. So what, I'm, what you do in, a, what you do in, a, uh, in Kubernetes is like, Basically, you're going to have a, a one Kubernetes proxy on each of those running is knowing uh, the other node. So basically, what we do is like we, you can connect on any of 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 those member of the uh, of your um, of your cloud uh, with the right port um, so to access to the service. So basically, to create my uh, to to make my HTTPD, which is running here distributing the, the load between the, uh, the two Tomcat. I don't care. I'm going to tell him, like any of, of those uh, member of my cloud is able to do uh, the routing. This, this is uh, Kubernetes, which does the routing for me. Uh, what I like to mention is like, um, you need a Docker registry. The Docker registry uh, is running on this box, and it's very easy. It, it's a simple command. Uh, you, you start a Docker registry, see Docker run on the port. Uh, you have to be a bit careful so that Kubernetes does not complain because it, it's a demo, so it's unsecure. Uh, one minute. It's unsecure by, on purpose. Uh, you pull the image, and then the things uh, have been running. So now uh, my demo should be ready. Uh, uh, So normally, uh, I could join my HTTPD there. And then uh, this is the Tomcat running. And when I refresh a bunch of time, it should be the counter should be increasing, and it should be moving from one node to the other. And that's it. So basically, uh, I've, I've proven that uh, my Tomcat software is working, and then the session is shared between the two. Uh, uh, nodes which, which are running there and chair between the two pods. It's the same if I would run 10 pods. If I scale up, as I have only uh, two nodes, I, can, I will have, uh, for if I scale to three, I will have uh, two Tomcat running on this one maybe, or two Tomcat running on this one and one on the other. And I guess I'm out of time. Yes.
And if you have questions, you can come to me after.